Hello everyone. So uh, welcome to the lab three of design compiler. In the last uh, session, uh, we saw how to set the design constraint, how to do normal constraint, and compiler design. How to uh, we saw how to create a clock. So I have just uh, uh, loaded all the commands that uh, I set here. So you can type a command called history. So this is what I did. I just review these steps uh, once more. We set the search path. Uh, we set the link library, the target library. We define the design layer. This is uh, we read in the uh, all the RTL files. We elaborate. Now at this point, you should uh, set the lock the warning uh, on the web. Uh, after elaboration, you should set the uh, inference support. What all blocks are inferred? What all how the case and case got uh, this inferred? Whether it's full case or parallel case. Then we start setting the op the uh, environment condition, which is the operating condition. Uh, I'll discuss about this command later. Uh, so set operating conditions. Uh, I forgot to set while we could we could do that. Let let's uh, assume it's whatever default while load it is. Let us take that. Should not be a problem. Uh, we set the input condition on input port. We set the load. Uh, I also discuss how to uh, estimate the value of input transition and load uh, by looking at the library. Uh, then uh, we go on and set the design constraint, we set the uh, plot, we set the uncertainty, uh, the plot transition, then we set the input delay uh, and the output delay. Uh, so here in this case, uh, the max delay and uh, the input delay is set for both max and min cases. We will see the usefulness of this when we come to the static timing analysis in minute time. Uh, so this is the, you could also define variables in uh, uh, DC. It, it's a tickle interface, so everything that works in tickle works here. So you could define the variables like this. Uh, so input ports we define a variable input ports. Remove from collection all inputs, then we remove the clock ports. So we define the input delays and output delays using these variables. And now I go ahead and compile. So last session we saw that compile ultra by default will uh, ungroup some blocks. It will ungroup some hierarchy. And to start with, we do not want that. Obviously, it results into a lower area, but in many cases we do not want that. So how do we do that? I just uh, search for a variable uh, that affects this so by looking at the ungroup. Uh, 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 let me see. Compile. Yeah. So what we would do is uh, we would run compile ultra uh, in a simple format uh, by using no auto ungroup, no boundary optimization, and no sequential algorithm. So in the next few uh, lecture sessions, we will see. In detail, what each of these means and uh, how does each of these affect synthesis. So, meanwhile, uh, let us remember that when you want to do a simple synthesis without scan, without any sophisticated uh, optimization technique, this is the command you should use compile ultra minus no sequential output inversion, minus no auto on group, and minus no boundary optimization. So this is the uh, you could use uh, no design rule and only design rule to control. Or incremental to do multi pass synthesis. Multi pass means you want to do synthesis in two or three iterations. Uh, but for one pass synthesis, this is the uh, basic command. So we we'll do that. And so it will start running synthesis. Now, after the synthesis is done, what we would do is uh, we would learn about the report command. That means now the synthesis is done. You want to check for all sort of issues. You want to verify that. The netlist you have generated, the uh, area and the timing results uh, are fine, whether they are in line with your goals or not. What if some of the design rule is violated? How do you? And we will see what all reporting commands we could use, what all reporting commands BC provides us for reporting and analyzing issues. Right? So, so it's going through synthesis. It, it goes through different sorts of phases: sequential optimization, delay optimization, design rule fixing. Then it will go into the area recovery phase. 
So it's a good thing that you should at least once look at um, this, this compile log uh, to see that sometimes what happens for a few blocks, it will take a long time in one of these steps, either delay optimization or area recovery. Then you, you know that something maybe is not right with your constraints, it is taking too much time. Few of the blocks I work on take more than a day in some of the cases. So I usually try and make sure that my constraints are all right and try to decrease the runtime because uh, we do not want big runtime for blocks because uh, each error then each resolution of an error will mean that much time added to your uh, to the block. So it's difficult to get that block out in time for the for the backend. So it's it's very uh, good practice to review this compile log to see how much time it is taking uh, once per block right? when when you start synthesizing a block. Now I'll write out the netlist uh, minus format very log minus output I'll write in chip dot I'll overwrite this file and I'll uh, I want to write the complete hierarchy I'll just single copy in my So now let's see uh, let's once look at this uh, netlist. Uh, so now let's look at the uh, module. So we see that now we have all the modules here with so different ungroup. Um, uh, right at the end, you would have uh, the top level module chip talk. And you notice that um, since the RTL was more of a structure, there was very, and there were very few, uh, there was not a lot of glue logic. So the only glue logic that is synthesized is that four inverted and an R gate. And all these, uh, all these modules are instantiated here. You could go to one module and see. Uh, so this is the module. It only has a couple of memory instances. For example, the module above this. Uh, so. Uh, Memory X I IP memory by IP is small memory. So this this module as a power controller has a lot of standard cell logic, it has a lot of blocks. So these are these DSS are nothing but they are blocks. So all the uh, blocks here would be non scan blocks, they will not have a test uh, TI pin, uh, they will simply have a D pin why because we did not do a minus scan. We'll also see what what happens when we uh, do a scan option. Uh, we'll do that later. So this is the netlist. Now uh, let's go back to design compiler and learn about the various reporting commands that are provided for us. So first, I would discuss uh, there's a simple command called report design. So all the you could know about all the report commands uh, by doing just doing report start for report underscore start. So these are all the report commands that are available to you. Uh, many of these commands are uh, restricted for specific use cases. There are various features of design compiler like design compiler graphical, design compiler topographical. So some of the commands will work only there. Uh, so we look at one of uh, the more famous commands. Uh, we've already looked at few. We have looked at report list. We looked at report clock. So let's okay. So first thing, let's see. Let's get a design summary by doing a report design. Let's see what the options are. So report design just has uh, no split and a physical option. Physical is not applicable for us. Uh, it is applicable for DC topographical. Uh, so time information is also provided, but we will not be looking into that. Uh, the no split is a is an option that is common to a lot of report commands, and it means that whenever the, uh, the line overflows, uh, it will not split the line. So whenever you are viewing it on screen. Then it's all right not to give this option, but whenever you are writing into a report file, I would recommend giving the no split option. So right now I'm viewing it on a screen, so I'll just do report design. So now it gives me a summary of uh, some. It gives me a summary of environment. It, it gives me a summary of library view. It gives me what is the link library. It gives me uh, uh, if I have. Provided any restrictions on the type of flip flops and lateral views I have it. So they are not specified. It tells me what is the operating condition here. It tells me what is the wire load model. Now, in this case, I did not apply a wire load model 
for this session. Last session I uh, discussed about the command that you can use to provide a valid model, but this particular version of standard cell library contains the automatic variable selection. So, it is selected automatically from the total cell area. Uh, the default is uh, uh, the default is a top, so it will apply only it will take only the top level value model for all the hierarchical designs. Uh, okay, so it is it is not using top, it is using growth, okay, fine. And it gives us uh, uh, it is strange why it is not giving input delays and output delays. Let me just check the report code command. So report code can be used to. To check what all so input delay is there, and uh, so it may there may be problem with the report design command. So sometimes there are bugs in the tool version. So, so here it tells me that there are in fact input delay specified. So, uh, what about the output delay? Yeah, output delay is also specified, but uh, strange that report design does not tell us that it tells us that input delay is not specified. And output delay is not specified. It says that there are pin input delays and pin output delays, but what we have specified as code, we have, we have specified uh, input delays and output delays are usually specified as codes. There are some cases where we would might want to provide input delays and output delays for some internal pin, but that is not recommended. It is used for very, very special case which uh, is outside the scope of this code. So, do not worry about it. So, uh, yeah, report, report design will tell you what all. It just gives you a summary of all the design parameters. So I would recommend to use the specific cases. For example, if you to report the specific commands. For example, you could do a report lift for library. You could use a report while load model to check what while load model is used. So this is the report while load, which is much more. It provides much more detail than report design. So. Uh, Looking at the report design, I would, I would recommend use the more specific reporting commands. Uh, for example, you could use report post minus or post to check that whether that the input and output delays you have applied are in fact there, in fact being read in by DC. Uh, again, we saw this report plot. Uh, we, we can verify what plot is specified here, uh, what is the frequency of the clock, what is the waveform DC is using. Then uh, there is a very interesting command called report QR which reports a summary of the quality of results. Let us see that. Let us see whether it gives any option. So, let us see the summary first. So, significant digits is uh, will be used for timing number, timing and variation numbers, uh, where you could say that I guess by default it is 2 or 3, I guess. I think it is 2, yeah. The period is being reported as 2.00. So, the by default the significant digit is uh, 2 I guess. Let us look at the summary first. So, now uh, it tells us that it gives us the timing summary. So, uh, it tells us that the worst negative slack is 2.99 nanoseconds. That means the worst critical, the worst timing path, worst setup path is violating by 2.99 nanoseconds. Total negative slack is 227.66. Number of oil violating parts are 97. We will see, we will see what it means in much more detail in, in, in coming uh, slides and coming lectures. So, TNS that is the total negative, so WNS is worst negative slack, TNS is the total negative slack which is the summation of the negative slack of all the violating points. So, all the 97 violating points, okay. I think I have not explained what is slack, so we I will explain that. Uh, it will make more sense. It tells us the area, it tells us that there are no hole constraints, which is fine. It tells us that there are no nets which have the archaeology. Uh, Let us look at if it provides any more information. So, it gives us the quality of results and statistics for the current design. Uh, you can specify the significant digit. Scenario is uh, not applicable for us. Okay, so we did a summary. Now let's look at the detailed report. The detailed report is much more bigger. So now it tells us that timing uh, So 
the cloth in this cloth yeah so the tail has this is the cloth in this cloth so we know that there is only one cloth so it tells now per cloth what is the statistic so let's say you have multiple cloths so there will be multiple entries here it tells us that the maximum levels of logic are 12 levels of logic means that between two registers how many combination elements are there maximum there are 12 critical path length is 3.69 that means the path delay we look at we look at the one of the timing reports and see what it means by that and then this things will become clear. So it tells us the summary of the timing. It tells us what is the cell count. So hierarchical cell count is 44. That means these are the total number of hierarchical cells. Right? It tells us what is the lead cell count. Now lead cell count is the total number of cells in the design. So lead cell means a cell which is not hierarchical. So any standard cell, any memory is a hierarchical cell. Because there is no other cell inside it, as far as design compiler is concerned. So, for example, an inverter is a leaf cell because inverter is the lowest level of hierarchy that DCC. Similarly, a memory is a leaf cell. Because why? Because we read the dot for the memory, and DC does not see anything inside that. It only knows the timing information and the area information for the cell. So, any cell, like standard cell or a memory, is a hierarchy, is a leaf cell. It tells us what is the number of buffers and inverters, total number of buffers and inverters. It gives us the summary of area. It tells us what is the combination area. Non combination area is the sum of all the uh, sequential and memory cells. Net area <laughs> is uh, estimated from bioload model. So it tells us what is the cell area. So cell area is the sum of combination and non combination. Design area is the sum of cell area and net area. It tells us that their total number of nets are this. There are no nets which have volition. It tells us which machine did we uh, did we run. It tells us what is the resource sharing. There are some numbers on logic optimization and mapping optimization. Uh, so these are the time it takes for resource sharing, logic optimization, and mapping optimization. Overall compile time is 63 seconds. Out of which uh, uh, out of which these many uh, seconds are used for resource sharing for logic optimization. Yeah, so report uh, QR in, uh, it gives the summary of the all the violations and the area. Right? Now let's look at again look at the specific report. Let's look at report area. So now report area uh, again it tells so uh, there are many kinds of reporting commands and some information is common to like for example report area and report queue are both tell us what is the area report area is a much more specific command so it tells what are the libraries used number of ports number of nets number of cells number of references number of references means number of instances uh, number of nets uh, then uh, Number of cells is uh, the total number of cells in the top level, not the uh, uh, we will we'll see how this number 12 comes. Number of ports is total amount of input and output ports. So, uh, you could let us say I want to so I want to know how many inputs are in this design to know the number to know the total number of inputs. We say all inputs there is a command a nice command called size of collection. So, I do a size of collection, this gives me the number of elements in a collection. Now, since all inputs gives me a number of uh, number of inputs, I can tell I can use size of collection to know the number of inputs here. So, number size of collection, all inputs tells me there are 34 inputs. I can do a size of collection. I guess there should be a all outputs, and 67 outputs. Uh, so. Uh, we, we sum both of them. We will we'll have the number of ports here. They are 101, one, right? Uh, so they are. Uh, is there? So there, we can see how many commands like this are. So there are. These are com the commands to get the collection. So all inputs, all outputs, all registers. You can also see 
how many registers are there in this design you could do this so there are 723 sequence uh, registers here registers means they are all pit stops in this design and so on so uh, but these numbers here number of cores number of nets and number of cells they refer to the current design this is the top level design now let us I want to point out a few things in the network let us open the network again. So let us go to the top level design which is the last entry this the number of cells here is this is one cell instruction decoder 2, 3, 4, 5 then we go down and see 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 that is reported by the report of the so if you want to know the total number of cell across the complete design that means you are asking for the information of hierarchical cell. So uh, the one reported by design compiler report area command is simply the top level it refers to the top level design or your current design. So you could go inside let us say you want to analyze a design which is some hierarchies down. You can change the current design to that and run a report area. We will we'll see one example. Let us see, let us see what design we want to, uh, let us say I want to know what is the instruction decoder area, separate area, right. I, I want to analyze now, I want to go inside and analyze how much area does each of my module take. So I can say a current design, I can change it to instruction decoder, and now I do a report area. Now it tells me that. For this particular design, it uses only the standard cells, it does not use a memory because there is no memory inside. It tells me the number of ports, net, cells, number of references, it tells me what is the combination area and all. So, you could go to any part of your design, in any part of a hierarchy, and do a report area on that. So, a lot of commands, most of the commands in DC work on the current design. Now, I want to reset the current design to chip top. So this this was all about report area. So we saw report area, report QR. Now let's look at uh, the uh, so the, the the commands I use the most, which are most effective, report area. Then there's a command called report constraint. Let's see this. It's a very interesting uh, thing. It's again gives the summary of all the so report constraints. As the name suggests, tells you it has a lot of options. It tells you what all constraints are there in your design and if some of them get violated how many are met it gives all kinds of information. So what I do I just do a report constraints without anything so we see that all the options here are they, they lend specificity to this report constraint. So you want a very specific information let us say I want a summary of how many setup violations are there in my design? So I do a report constraint minus all violators. All violators will give just the violation. I do a uh, setup is a uh, is a max delay constraint. Uh, Strange. Okay, let me see. Just all violators. Uh, it says that this design has no violated constraints, and I have doubt about it. Let me do a report. Okay, let me check this design. Something has. Oh, uh, looks like somehow the uh, okay. Looks like when I change the current design, the constraints got overwritten. So what we'll do is we'll compile this design again, and we'll apply the blocks and input output to the new again. Let's see. Uh, usually it should not happen, but uh, looks like there's some bug with this version. I just. Uh, ok 
Okay, let's let us compile it. So I can do a just like you know, so I can search for the last command. Yeah. Now let's look at the port constraints. Minus all variables. No, right. So somehow uh, the constraints got uh, erased from the design. I'm not sure why. Maybe uh, I played with the current design, so that's why. Uh, now, what what happens here is now report constraints minus all wallet is a very useful command, which gives you a summary of all the violations in your design. So now it tells me here that there are min delay hold violations. Min delay and hold is same. Uh, we'll see why hold is called a min delay. The clock group means that it's working on this functional clock. So all these endpoints, uh, there is a violation of this much nature, right? Uh, now let's see. Uh, right. Now uh, this tells us just the pin where there is a violation. We'll see what it mean, means by part delay and uh, required and actual part delay by looking at the report timing command and the slack. So now let's see the most famous command of all which is used in for all kinds of timing and called the report timing command. So what I report timing command has a lot of options. So then I'll uh, after explaining the report timing report I'll go back to some of these commands. So it has uh, uh, probably the most extensive command uh, there is in DC or prime time report timing. So you see it has a lot of options. As the name suggests, report timing is used to see report a timing on a particular path, right? I'll just do a plain report timing and see what happens. Now, a plain report timing will give me, it gives me a report timing. Path type full means it will report all the cells in the path. Delay max that means it is a setup. So there are two kinds of reports, max report and a min report. Max corresponds to a setup report, min corresponds to a hold report. Number of paths, so delay max means it's a setup kind of report. Minus max paths, one, so these are default options that it shows. Max paths means it gives me only one path, minus, so you could want more than one path, more than, let's say you want to report the five words path, so you can do that. It tells me that design is the instruction decoder. Uh, so there is a problem with the current design that is why the things are not happening I will have to do it again. So the current design is a instruction decoder which is not the what we want, we want the chip talk. So let us, uh, sorry about that, let, let me change the current design to chip talk again. Uh, oh, I will have to clear, clear the memory. So this so there is a variable that contains uh, that controls whether uh, so as soon as I change the design to instruction decoder to show you the area report, what design compiler did was it removed the other designs from the memory that were not used. That's why we were having all these problems. So I'll I'll once more do stuff. I'll once more read in the design. It will take hardly a minute, and I'll set the things again. So that is why it's useful to uh, have a, a report like this. Have a script like this which you can run uh, instantaneously. Uh, I'll do a compile and try again. So at the top, chip top level, I was expecting to see some uh, setup violations. Uh, I remember from the last session, but I did not see any setup violations. If you remember in the report constraints, I only saw hold violations. So uh, now I hopefully I'll see some setup violations. So what I've missed applying is uh, the load and the transition numbers. We we'll, we'll do that. We'll see. Uh, so it's a blessing for us. So we'll see the usage of incremental compile. So now uh, I'm synthesizing again with uh, the clock in place with input delays and output delays, and uh, I've missed applying uh, the load and the transition. So input transition. Uh, let's see how we can solve for that. That, so now uh, there's hardly any 
design rule fixing uh, it goes down very quickly so this is now let us uh, look at the report timing or report let us look at report constraints again now you see now it also tells us what is the maximum set of points it tells us that there is an end point on which there is some set of points right. Uh, so it, it gives a report complete report right. So what you could do is now you could go specific you could say show me only the set of points so it shows only the maximum evaluation it's a big report now let us do a report time. So now uh, the design here is chipped off which is good operating condition library valid model now this is the start point it tells me that start point is a rising edge to the flip flop clock by clock end point is an output port path group is clock the path group <coughs> is the clock name of the clock that captures the end point now why do we say that clock captures the end point because we have specified the output delay on the output port with respect to clock. So this type of path is called a register, register to output path. Part type match with a setup report. Uh, do not worry about this, it tells us that this is a valid model. This is the important point. Now please note that a setup path is a path between is a max part type of path and this start it starts at one clock edge, the launch clock edge, and the data is captured at the other clock edge, right. So the this is the launch part, this is the launch part. The, so now let me also do a report clock. So the clock waveform is 0 1 clock rises at 0 falls at 1 clock rises at 0 clock network delay clock is ideal there is no um, so the, there are no delays specified on the we have not defined any network delay so you could define set clock latency so if you specify a positive value it will come here this is 0 for a while now this is it goes to the memory C pin it goes to memory output pin this part INCR part is the delay that is consumed by a cell. So here memory consumes this delay, the path delay is nothing but the cumulative effect. So these are this is the list of cells that are in the path. It starts from a memory, goes through some combination of it, goes to the output port. Each of these cells, so here only output pin is listed. Each of these cells consumes this cell consumes a 10 ps delay, this consumes a 30 ps delay, it is a magnitude, right? Uh, this consumes 30 ps again, 40 ps, 60 ps, 70 ps, and here there is a cumulative path. So, the data arrival time at the output when the launch clock is at 0 is 3.64. <laughs> now, the capture clock comes at 2, the complete total period of the clock is 2, two nanoseconds, the launch edge comes at 0, for theta the capture edge comes at 2. We have specified some clock uncertainty which means that the capture edge can come a little bit earlier since it is 0 0.3 it gets subtracted. We have specified an output external delay that means the data should come at least 1 nanosecond before the capture edge. Capture edge is at 2 adjusted by the uncertainty it is 1.7. Data should come at least 1 nanosecond before capture edge so data should arrive by 0.7 but data is arriving at 3.64 there is a problem. So the data required time is the time at which the data should be stable. Data arrival time is the actual data that arrives. If the data arrival time is less than the data required time, we say that the time is volatile. So slack is the margin we have. 
in this case the margin is negative 2.9 so it's violated now this is a register to an output port path if i say uh, now let's look at the various options that are available to us uh, report time so now after this you should be clear about what is meant by data required time what is meant by data arrival time now let's look at report uh, timing minus l so there are so many options now you could go very specific if you want the timing between two registers you could do that by saying a report timing minus from and minus to you could go even more specific if you want write transition and fault transition or you want to record a timing to a particular path if you want the timing the if you want to increase the number of paths for example what i would do here now now it reported only one path so what i would do is i will ask it to tell me uh, i'll ask it to tell me what are the worst let's say five paths this is the worst path the slack is minus 2.94 now the second path starts start point and point so now it gives me five worst paths now we see that now see report timing is for detailed analysis on the other hand report constraint was for a more summary kind of report so i give a report so what i do is what is a good practice what you could do you first you do a report constraint minus all volatile you a minus no split and redirect it to a a volatile report i do a volatile report now you go back you open this report and see what all volatiles are there now i see here that the endpoints are all output ports i would worry more about register and register volatiles than the volatiles that input and output ports i tell you one later now let's focus on the register to register part, if there is any volatile now we see here that there is some pin here that volatiles and it's an, it's not a it's not a port however it might have a volition starting from input port this is just the end point the left most column is the end point so and don't worry about the whole volition for now let me see if all these pins are reset pins so they must be similar kind of path let's see what what is this volition go back now i want a specific report so i go, go back to report timing i say report timing minus 2 and i check out this one so now see the start point is a register and the end point is also a register so this is a register to register path it tells us what is the valor model used for different designs in the automatic area based valor model clock rise this is a launch part launch for a register to register path will happen at the clock edge if you go back and see the lecture slide uh, it starts at the clock edge it goes from clock to queue a clock it goes through all these combination logic so there is a big big combination logic it goes to the multiply the register pin the some clock register pin now here so there will uh, there will be launch clock arrives at 2 So the capture clock arrives at two, as in the same the register for uncertainty. Now, when we saw the register to output path, we subtracted the output delay. In this case, the output delay is replaced by the library setup time. Library setup time tells us that the data should come this much time earlier than the capture edge. It is a setup time constraint, so it is subtracted again. So data required time is 1.57. Data arrival time is 2.92. Slack again is violated. Now what does this tell us? At the first glance, this tells us that our design is not suitable to work at 500 megahertz. Why? Because for a violation of for a clock period of two nanoseconds, 
आर डिजाइन वॉलेट्स आर दिस मच अमाउंट सो आई डू नाउ आई डू सम कैलकुलेशन माय पीरियड वाज 2.2 मिनट्स द वॉलेशन इज 1.36 फॉर रेस्ट टू रेस्ट ऑफ आर सो इफ माय पीरियड वाज 3.36 नॉन सेकंड देन दिस माइट हैव मेट सो दिस इज अ स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड कैलकुलेशन now i calculate the frequency and at 297 megahertz without even going to for the compilation i can say that my design will work this is how we estimate the performance of a design and now we know that this design will not work at 500 megahertz now there can be multiple reasons first reason could be that You are aiming for a much higher frequency, but your design is not good. Second indication could be that your design is good. You are you are confident on your design, but it is not supported by your standard for library. Now, in this case, uh, for example, you synthesize a design sixty five nanometer. But you find, oh boss, I am not using my design. I am my standard version. So what you could do? Either improve the design or decide whether you want to go to a lower technology. Because if you go from 65 nanometer to 45 nanometer, your standard size will become faster. So this performance is truly limited by both the design. Now here, one thing I I and I see that there are so many combination elements in this in this critical path. So this is the critical path. Critical path means path means this is the violation, worst case violation on the resistor to resistor path. I see there are so many levels of logic here. I see there are like about maybe twenty odd, and when there are twenty levels of logic, five hundred megahertz is a bit, the very high frequency, right? To aim for. Now somebody might might ask that, uh, let's open the volition report again. Now somebody might ask that there is more volition on the output port, so why aren't we worried about it? Now let's see. So what I'll do is I'll just this is the way you could report the worst path ending at the outer port. Now it's the same report as before. Now I see that there is one more factor here, which is output exponential. In the register to register case, it was a library set of time. Now the library set of time is something that is fixed. We cannot play with it. But output exponential delay is something we can play with. How? Now I am assigning one nanosecond to the exponential world. My period is two nanoseconds. I am assigning fifty percent of the time to the external world. This is one problem. I could play with this. Uh, if I know that the other the part the part of the chip that is capturing this this output port does not need one nanosecond, so I can take some time away from it. I can reduce my output delay, so that will reduce the volition. Second problem I see is that the part starts at memory. Memory itself is taking two point nine nanoseconds. So I can never work faster than this. So my memory is slow. Right. Third thing is that if the memory is slow, then I should not have a path from the memory to output port. I should have a block here. I should have some kind of pipelining here. So this is there is one guideline that is violated here, which is that I should register my input and output. If this output was was registered, that means if and if this uh, so usually for slower memory you should have a pipeline clock. That means there should be a clock right after this. So what I would recommend you is to you is that you go back and understand the design a bit, for example, design, and see if you can improve. It. First thing I see is that these drivers are this is an X zero driver. This is a very very slow driver. So maybe I could upsize it. How I can upsize it? Now, so why why is DC using a low driver here? Why why isn't it upsizing it? DC knows that uh, it has a big volition, and we did not have any design rule. We did not apply any restrictive design rule constraint apart from what is in the library. So it just did not optimize this path well. So it happens a lot of times when there are volition, when there is a clash between different groups. Uh, and DC will, uh, walk, will optimize one group of path at the cost of other path. 
Now, uh, going back to the constraints, I said that I forgot to apply the uh, I, I forgot to apply the input function and output flow. Now, what do I do? I can do it again. I'll apply a set input condition. Let me apply a point five at point selection all inputs. I apply the load. Now, do I need to do a full compile again? No. Now I could do is I did the I did this compile. Now I'll just add an implementation. So I updated a constraint. I updated the design rule constraint. It is not a very major thing. So I can choose to do an implementer synthesis, which will be comparatively faster than a full. Right? So now. Uh, it will do design loop fixing and it will spend a bit more time on it. So, there are some violations. So, in case you uh, did an implementation synthesis and find that it is not improving a lot, I would recommend start from scratch again because starting from scratch, so see, there are, uh, there are design loop violations here. Uh, are there? No, design loop possible. So, design loop is not Now, let us see the uh, timing again. So now you notice that the uh, inverter that drives the output is now of size. Uh, do we have the report value? So this is now an exit inverter. Why an exit inverter? Because we specified a loop, an increase loop. Now, now forget about the timing problems in the design. I'll just show you the power of report timing. So what all we could do? Now I'll uh, I'll speak some uh, some typical scenarios. I'll talk about some typical scenarios and how to report timing on that. I want to see the worst case timing starting from an input port. Report timing minus from all inputs. Now this command will report timing starting from all inputs and going anywhere either to a register or to an output port, but it will show only the worst case path. This is the worst case path, it starts at an input that we specified, uh, it goes to an endpoint which is a register, so it is an input to register path and we saw we saw what this means right, there is some small violation here. Now I want to see five worst paths starting from inputs. Simply do a max pass, it will tell me all the all the paths. Uh, now I want to see, let us say I want to see the worst case register to register path. Now this is a bit tricky. So what I could do is <coughs> now here in this case there is no separate group of inputs and outputs. All the so uh, uh, all the, the the path group here is a very powerful thing to have. Path group is always determined by the capture clock. In case of input or register path, since the registers all registers are at the same clock, it's always the the clock group is clock. All the register to register path have the group clock. All the uh, register to output paths, since the output ports are captured by again the same clock. So for all the clock group is same, which is the Group clock. So I can do something like a group path. I can say group path. Uh, I'll maybe deal with this a bit later. Uh, so let's see what group path means uh, first. So this group path uh, serves two purposes. It will uh, tell you how to. It will may. Uh, it gives you the power to create a new clock group, new path group. And in turn, you could also control the optimization on this group. Path. Whenever you create a group, by default, you tell DC that I am creating this group because I want you to pay more attention on this. So you could do this for critical path also. This is this comes under advanced synthesis technique, but you could you could do this to create separate groups, right? And you could use that those groups, those path groups to report time. Uh, so. Uh, there is one more way to report timing on uh, register to register path is by doing this minus from all registers 
minus 2 all registers. So uh, it gives some warnings. Uh, uh, okay, it complains that you should have. Oh, what I'll do is. Uh, I would need some. Uh, let me try one more example. Second thing, what you could do is, uh, I'll I'll have to write a procedure for it. That's why the the group path is is more sophisticated. Plus, uh, the uh, the command report timing in DC is a subset of the report timing command in prime time, which is much more powerful. So when we come to prime time, we see that uh, a lot of things work better there. Uh, so. Uh, the prime time design timing, so the prime time timing engine, timing engine means the the software that will do all the delay calculation and will show you the report timing report. The prime time timing engine is much more superior to design compiler. Uh, design compiler uh, commands for timing are very basic versions of that. So a lot of things we'll see will start working in prime time that are not working here. So uh, I have to write a procedure to report register to register path. That is why it's very uh, useful to create group from the starting. We'll see that in the next lab, perhaps. Uh, now we saw uh, we saw how to report the worst pass. We saw how to report common too. Apart from timing, uh, report timing also tells what are the load and function numbers. So we could do this, and let's say we just do this so it will show us the worst pass again. It's the same path, but now it will start telling us what is the capacity. So here, this is the capacitance. This is the transition. So if you see, uh, I'll, what I'll do is also also expand a bit and say it all only shows the input pins here. I'll also show the uh, those is it only shows the output pins here. The Y is the output of each cell. We also want to see what is the input pin, and let's say we also want to see the next. So now the report is much more extensive. Uh, so it it uh, now there's an in, it starts with a uh, with a clock. So there's a clock here at C1 clock. We set the clock. If you remember, we set the clock transition number to be 0.5. It is coming here. This is the net which has this gap. This uh, this net gap might be coming from the wire load model. Uh, so now C1 to data out. This is the uh, this is the uh, this is the net now again. So now you see multiple levels. So for let's say for NAND cell, we see that what is the net that drives it? What is the fan out of this net? What is the capacitance at this net? We see uh, so at let let's see this inverter at the input A. This is the transition. This is the delay part incremental. This is the cumulative delay part. This inverter input pin is driven by this net, which in turn comes from this memory. Right. Similarly, you could do it for any cell. Let's look at uh, this AND cell. So input is A1, output is Y. This is a net which has a fan out of two. This is the capacitance. Uh, these are the transition. So the transition numbers are reported for both input and output pin. The capacitance is only reported at the net, which makes sense. So now, for example, this total cap, this 0.87, might be is is it the sum of the net cap itself, the net N2 itself, plus the capacitance output cap at Y. It's the sum of both, right? Uh, and so, so this is uh, the net capacitances are uh, based on the Y load model. So this is the way you could report. Uh, more extensive data using the report timing command. Um, so now uh, I'll uh, request you to experiment with the report timing command. There are so many options available here uh, to work with. Minus significant digits is one. Uh, uh, you could read more about it by doing the man page, and you could try at least these options: minus from, minus to, minus through. And there's also an option called minus path type. So Is the option called minus path? We could say end, and it will tell us only the endpoints. So this is very similar to the report constraint report. Uh, in this case, it will uh, it will give uh, 
since we gave end it will give all the uh, endpoints that are available right so this is very similar to the report constraint plus it is not giving us violations now it is also giving us the path those are needed right so uh, now uh, when we apply constraints we want to check two things uh, so there is a command called check timing so uh, when we run, when i run check timing uh, dc is telling it is checking few things and it is telling if there are any problem it is checking generated clocks there are no generated clocks we'll talk about generated clocks when we come to unit 5 it is checking combination loops it is checking input delay so it is checking uh, so many things if there is any something absent if there is some problem then dc will tell here this design apparently right now it doesn't have any problem like this again check timing is much more powerful in prime time and we'll we'll see a lot more of that in prime time uh, so so the, the aim of design compiler is to do a performance and area analysis performance and area analysis requires you to set clock frequency set area goals and you are done for most of the cases we saw the report timing on uh, when we do a report timing it gives us only the setup path right how to report the whole path we do a delay min this will tell you what is the whole path now see the difference here it tells us delay min now this is the timing is coming from register to register path type is min which means it's a whole path now here this is the launch path clock comes at zero this is the clock to queue timing and that's it it goes to the memory pin some pin i121 pin now the capture is also at the same clock end zero so the whole path if you go back to the figure and see the whole path is checked on the same clock end the launch and capture is the same there is no concept of frequency here hold is frequency independent for max path for setup path it will pick up the path with the maximum delay and the path with the maximum delay is bound to have lot of levels of logic for hold path it will pick up the fastest path that is why it is also called the min path now for hold this is the launch part there is just a flop there is no combination logic there the capture rate is the same there is a clock constraint and now it will get added that means the capture rate will come later so capture at zero adjust it for clock uncertainty point b the library hold time for this pin for this pin the library hold time is point 2 so this is the clock path the library hold time is point 2 so the data required time is point 5 that means if the clock edge is coming at zero the data should be stable till point 5 but the data is getting altered at point 2 2 till point 5 the old data should have remained but the new data is coming at point 2 2 the violation is point 5 minus point 2 2 point 8 point 2 8 sorry and this does not depend on the clock frequency there is no clock frequency in picture right you see a lot more of this in unit 5 uh, please note that uh, the uh, for hold timing you should not be concerned about the hold timing in in synthesis reports in most of the cases there are very special cases where you should worry about the hold timing but uh, as a thumb rule after synthesis check the area check the report constraints minus all violators and if you see violations analyze the setup paths forget about the whole paths for now i summarize the report timing report again this is the clock launch this is the data path so this is the clock pin if we go first to the clock pin this is the data path so the first half of the report is the data path which at the end of it you will come up with the, the data arrival time the second part of the report is the capture path which is the clock capture path there will be adjustments for clock uncertainty library setup time or output external delay or something like that at the end of which you will come up with the data required time 
the difference between data required time and data arrival time is the slack if the slack is less than 0 it will show as violated if the slack is greater than 0 it will tell us met right this is the way you interpret the report time report it is one of the most important things you should learn for doing a good synthesis and for doing a good timing analysis right so in the next uh, uh, in the in the unit 5 you would see uh, more on this probably i'll have one more lab on this with some advanced uh, synthesis techniques and some advanced usage of report time so that would be a bit of an advanced lab so it will be very good to get your hands uh, uh, get hands on experience in, in the first three lab. Also, uh, please go and analyze the design yourself. See what all design uh, guidelines are not followed. For example, if the inputs are registered, if the outputs are registered, and so on. Uh, analyze that problem, uh, correct it, and using the same uh, library, we saw that the timing meets at uh, 300, about 300 megahertz. Maybe you should make, uh, try and make this design work at 350 or 400 megahertz by doing some design changes if you can. So that's a, a, a big, a, a significant assignment for you to follow. Uh, uh, so we will see more advanced features of design compiler, of uh, compile command and uh, group pass and so on in the next session. Thank you.